you will learn how you can securely access a private AKS cluster using Azure Bastion. Organizations want to implement secure networks and zero trust networks. For that, they would prefer that their AKS cluster would be a private cluster. This means that the control plane of the cluster will be accessible only through a private endpoint. And now the only way to access that AKS cluster is the, through the private endpoint. This means that I need to use a machine inside the virtual network or inside the perimeter of the network of the AKS cluster. This means that I should be within the virtual network or within period virtual network. And the typical solution to achieve this is by just creating a natural virtual machine that will act as a jump box inside the virtual network of the cluster. Now here we have two options. Either we can expose this virtual machine access through a public IP address. But in terms of security, this is not secure because we are exposing too much. The second option is to use a more secure option to access that uh, Azure virtual machine, which is here using Azure Bastion. So for other Azure Bastion, it will be injected into the virtual network so it can access that virtual machine and Azure Bastion would be accessible to the end user through the public IP address. And that end user will be able to use the Azure portal or through the command line in order to access that uh, Bastion host. And that communication will go through TLS. This means it's encrypted with HTTPS. So this way the communication from the user console or the user laptop will go through TLS to the public IP address of the Azure Bastion and then he can connect to the Jumpbox virtual machine and from there he can connect to his private AKS cluster through the private endpoint. Let's see next how we can implement this architecture. For this demonstration we'll go to use Terraform in order to create a private AKS cluster that uses private endpoint and then we'll create a Jumpbox that's going to be an Azure virtual machine and then we'll use an Azure Bastion that have a public IP address. All of these resources will live within one single virtual network. And then from there, we'll simulate how a user can access the Bastion and then the Jumpbox private endpoint to access the AKS cluster. This is a demonstration that will use some Terraform code in order to create these resources. And that Terraform code, you can find it within this GitHub repository with the readme file that explains all the steps that will go through for the deployment and also the connection to the bastion and also how to perform the connection to the AKS uh, cluster. I've cloned that Terraform code or that repository into my local machine and here I have access to that Terraform code. So what we do here first is that we'll create a virtual network with three subnets, one for the cluster, one for the bastion and one for the virtual machine. And then we create the Bastion host that will use a public IP address. And note here for Bastion, it will be injected into the subnet for uh, Bastion. Just make sure here that tunneling enabled is set to true if you want to use SSH from your command line. After that, we create a virtual machine, Linux virtual machine that will act as a jump box. And here we will go to install some tools into this virtual machine using the custom tools. So it will use the install tools.sh file. And here we'll go actually to update the system and then we'll go to install the Azure CLI and then install the cube control command line because we'll use it later to access the AKS cluster. The virtual machine also will use a managed identity. This is optional actually. And that managed identity will be used for, so that the, from the virtual machine, I can log into my Azure subscription using that managed identity and to access the AKS cluster or to be able to get the config file for the AKS cluster, I give it here the contributor role, but this could be also a reader role. As I said, this is uh, optional. You can also just use your own user identity to access the, AK, the uh, Azure subscription. After that, we go to create the AKS cluster. So here, I'm setting a version for my AKS cluster and then here I'm enabling the private cluster creation and for the DNS resolution I set this to be system this means that a private DNS zone will be created automatically for me and it will be managed by AKS. Now to to deploy that Terraform code, I use the command Terraform init plan and apply and this will go to create the required Terraform resources. Note that here as output, you'll get the name of the resource group and also the resource ID of the virtual machine, the Jumpbox Linux virtual machine. We'll use these later. On the Azure portal, you can see on the main resource group that now here you'd have the required resources, which are the AKS cluster, the bastion, the identity for the virtual machine, 
the public IP address for Bastion, the VM itself, and the virtual network. So that's the main resource group. There is a second resource group created for the node resource group that contains here the private DNS zone and the private endpoint that will be attached to the cluster virtual network. Now I can go to connect to my AKS cluster through Bastion. For that I have two options, either to use the Azure portal or to use the command line from my laptop. I start first with the Azure portal, so for that I need to go to the Azure virtual machine and then from here I set or I go to connect and they have connect via Bastion. And here I have the option to use RDP or SSH. In this case this is a Linux virtual machine, I go through SSH. It will use the port number 22 by default and then here I need to provide the username and also the virtual machine password. You can get these values from the Terraform code where here you'd have that username and the password. Once this is provided I can go to click connect and this will open a new tab in my browser and here I get access to the Azure virtual machine through Azure Bastion. So from here I can do things like pwd to show the current folder or print env to show the environment variables and remember here we have already installed some tools in this virtual machine those tools are the azure cli and kubectl cli for that those tools are already installed so if i type az i should find az already installed then i can try az login if i want to use my own user identity i can login with my email and password but here again this virtual machine is using the managed identity that we have specified right here so for that I can use that managed identity to log in to my Azure subscription and I can do that by adding dash dash identity into the az login command line with that it will log in and as you see here the identity used here is the system assigned identity actually it's user assigned identity so I'm logged in as this identity now I can do things like az group list dash o table in order to list the resource groups into inside this uh, Azure subscription. I can see the resource groups and then I can do also az aks list dash o table. And yes, here I can see my aks cluster. Now I'll go to connect to this aks cluster. For that I'll use the command az aks get credentials. So I should provide the name of the resource group and then the name of the aks cluster. And then here tells me that it did download successfully the kubeconfig file. So now I should be connected to my cluster. Let's verify that. So we'll run the command kubectl get nodes. And yes, here we get access to our AKS cluster from the Azure Bastion. So that's the first solution you to access the cluster using Bastion from the Azure portal. Now there is a second solution actually, and that is using the command line. So from the command line here, I can specify for Azure Bastion, which is the virtual machine that I want to access to. For that, we need first to get the resource ID of the Azure virtual machine, and that is this value right here. And then I can use AZ network Bastion, and then I specify the mode to be either RDP, or in my case, I'll use SSH. And then I need to provide the name of my Bastion host, which is just Bastion in my case, and then the name of the resource group, and the username for my Azure VM and the authentication type that's going to be password in this case. And then I should specify the target resource ID. The target resource ID is this value from here. So I'll just paste it here. And then here it will ask me for the password. So again, I will use the password that I've provided on my Terraform code. Now I get access to the virtual machine from my console window. Great. So because now the VM have already access to the AKS cluster because we have con configured that from the Azure portal right here. So I just get immediate access to my cluster. If I run kubectl get nodes, I get access to the cluster. Great, I hope this was helpful. If you are looking for more content, please check out my YouTube channel. Thank you. So in this demonstration, we have seen how to access an AKS cluster through Azure Bastion, Azure VM, and a private endpoint, and all of them lives within one single virtual network. However, for enterprises, they might not have all of these resources within one single virtual network. If they are using a hub and spoke networking model, then they might have the Azure Bastion lives within a hub virtual network and the AKS cluster will live within a spoke virtual network and both of them have virtual network uh, peering. Azure Bastion supports connecting through 
the VNet peering to another resource or to a private endpoint that lives inside another virtual network. So nothing to change here, just make sure that Azure Bastion or your Azure Virtual Machine can resolve the FQDN of the private AKS cluster. This means that the private DNS zone should be attached not only to the spoke virtual network, but also it should be attached to the hub virtual network.